Hi, I'm Dave Cannon and I'm an Alaska fish biologist. I thought I'd start this video off with a little action, jet boating and fishing a remote Alaska stream because my last video, a semi-serious plea for literary help for a book that needs to be written, was only able to muster up around 1,200 hits, which generated no substantial help, unfortunately. The book is about my concern for the future of fishes and the environment. It was only after that lackluster showing did I read the book, Don't Be Such a Scientist, in which I learned that the harsh reality is that people don't necessarily like boring information. No matter how important I think it is, they like action. And that's just honest to goodness reality, which is what this clip and my book are based on, reality. Since that first humdrum clip, I've come across several fishing videos that got tens of thousands, if not millions of views, some for reasons beyond my reckoning. First off, I came across one video where a fisherman was fishing a totally nondescript eastern stream for bass and panfish. All he did was take a few casts before getting hung up on the bottom. Not really any action there, yet almost 40,000 people have seen it. Another has a guy fishing for a silly stuffed rainbow trout. That got over 200,000. And then there's one where a supposed huge catfish tenderly takes a piece of fish out of a guy's hand. It's crazy about that. The makers admit on the clip to being very disappointed over how uneventful the whole thing was. Somehow it got over two million hits. Well, I'd settle for a couple thousand views if I can get my message out to the one right person who's willing to help me make a substantial difference. Now, I'm no flamboyant fisherman like Jeremy Wade of River Monsters fame, who also happens to be a biologist, nor do I have his bloody accent. Truth be told, the monsters I'm going after, Arctic grayling, only average around 14 inches in this stream. But I've got two important messages to get out to the world. First and foremost is that many of the world's fishes are in dire trouble. And secondly, I need help telling my story, which revolves around the losses of those fishes, and what that's meant to me personally, and what that'll mean to mankind. And if you're willing to sit through those messages, then you'll get to see me wrestle a mini river monster, a Cusquim River silver salmon on a fly rod. Beautiful specimen. Not a river monster, nonetheless a beautiful fish for here in remote Alaska. See if I can get a bigger one. His dorsal fin, colored dorsal, goes past the adipose fin right there. That's a pretty male. Look at those uh, oh, turquoise and pink stripes. There's a salmon swimming deep her destiny to keep I cannot tell her she's the last of her kind oh, a thousand times around from the sea to the spawning ground oh, what a cost oh, what a loss to all memory and the time they break at sea Miss the world through the eyes of those who keep sharing when there's nothing left to give. If we can walk this line with respect for all, oh, what a life we could live. Now, our fishes and other aquatic resources are in dire trouble. Uh, here's an article in Fisheries Magazine, published by the American Fisheries Society, titled, The Role of Fish Biologists in Helping Society Build Ecological Sustainability. It's written by Paul Angemeyer with the Virginia Polytech Institute. And he notes uh, several realities that we must face if we're going to turn the tide on some of these uh, environmental concerns. Harsh reality number one. Aquatic biota are in rapid decline worldwide. And he notes in North America alone that 25% of the fishes, 33% of the crayfishes, and 50% of freshwater mussels are threatened or endangered. Uh, harsh reality number two. 
Humans are responsible for those declines. Now, there's going to be wide uh, dissension amongst people over climate change, whether or not it's real or human caused, but the fact that we're losing so many aquatic resources at such an alarming rate is irrefutable. And one of the concerns, ocean acidification, it's not really on a lot of people's radar screens, but that's something that scares the living daylights out of me. Harsh reality number three. Our current management of ecosystems is failing to protect aquatic biodiversity. Now, he's not the only one that believes that. Here in upstream, Salmon and Society in the Pacific Northwest by the National Research Council, um, some of the top scientists and biologists in the nation, they contend that the social structures and institutions that have been operating in the Pacific Northwest have proved incapable of ensuring a long-term future for salmon, in large part because they do not operate at the right time and space scales. Now, I've worked for the Forest Service and the Fish and Wildlife Service for over 20 years, and uh, I have to agree that, yeah, uh, we're not doing a very good job at protecting those aquatic resources. Now, I've been trying to write a book for a long time and have been struggling with how to really make a difference. And I read The Trillion Dollar Meltdown by Charles Morris. And uh, Charles and, and a few other insightful people uh, predicted the economic meltdown a few years ago uh, when other people, I believe it was Dick Cheney, said something to the effect of, well, who ever saw that coming? Um, but I thought uh, if I could tap into some knowledge that Mr. Morris had, I, I asked him, I said, if you knew then what you know now, is there any way you could have uh, fended off the uh, economic crises? And um, here's what he had to say when I expressed my concerns for aquatic resources. He said, the problem that you're posing is much harder than any that I think about. Money is a metaphysical thing that we can create or destroy at will. You're talking about real things that die and disappear. When they start to disappear, prices will get much higher, and that may save them, or at least some. I have no good ideas to offer. Well, and I emailed him back a second time, and I expressed some more concern over the fishes, and he said, your message is very saddening. I have no advice. Fish are real entities. Money is not. Governments can will money in and out of existence at the flick of a finger. You're dealing with a much harder problem. Please accept all my good wishes and hope. Now, in my efforts to write that book, I came across this book, Writing for Story, by John Franklin. Craft Secrets of Dramatic Nonfiction, by a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner. And here's what uh, he has to say. Successful books generally have happy endings because the public has a maudlin craving to believe that everything is quite all right when the world is obviously going to hell in a handbasket. Now keep in mind uh, the ocean acidification crisis that I mentioned earlier. He says, negative lessons are painful and inefficient, and the intelligent reader has learned to put a rather small value on them. So I've often wondered, how do I go about and put a positive spin on, on such a stark message? Well, I was looking in a magazine and come across this advertisement for Natural American Spirit cigarettes. They're 100 U.S. grown tobacco cigarettes. And it says here, on the cosmic scale, it may be a small thing, but then to the many farmers we support, it's actually a pretty big deal. And then there's a couple of little promotional coupons on the bottom that say, share the love, share the love. Making our 100% U.S. grown tobacco cigarettes means more than supporting the heritage of small American farmers. It means safeguarding the environment through encouraging sustainable agriculture by shipping across shorter distances and by reducing our fuel use and emissions. It means we can improve the big picture by focusing on the details. It's what we do. And then, um, got your uh, notices below that that say no additives in our tobacco does not mean a safer cigarette and your Surgeon General's warning smoking causes lung cancer heart disease emphysema and may complicate pregnancy share the love
but share the love. It means we can improve the big picture by focusing on the details. It's what we do. And what I'm trying to do is, in the big picture, save the fishes and the environment. So if there's anybody in the uh, tobacco industry that maybe can help me put a positive spin on this dire message, uh, please contact me. Fish, it's a submarine. He's a big fat fish, a big and bold. A big fat fish, he likes his water cold. He's a big fat fish, a swimming about. A big fat fish, he's a mighty bull trap. He got an appetite, put a whale to shame. He'll eat fish or ducks or a bug chow mein. There's a tidal wave when he wiggles his tail. If you ain't that boy, he'd break your scale. He's a big fat fish, a big and bold. A big fat fish, he likes his water cold. He's a big fat fish, a swimming about. A big fat fish, he's a mighty bull trap. He's a wild rivers and I think it's clear Lots of trees both far and near They keep the water cool and give it shade When he's splashing there he's got it made He's a big fat fish, a big and bold A big fat fish, he likes his water cold He's a big fat fish, a swimming about A big fat fish, he's a mighty bull trout